Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. This is Play It Forward. Real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 554 is with Andrew Ibo Kitty from NBC's The Voice. Hello, Arrow. Do you find yourself trying to figure out when, when, when you cross that line into superstardom, how people are going to identify you, Andrew? Will they, will they call you? I'm, well, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to listen to some music from Andrew. Or is your last name going to become a huge part of the image that you're building? Mm. Yeah, that's, a very, that's a very good question. I think um, before all of this started, that wasn't something – it was something you think about kind of, but you never really know how people are going to react to you and um, latch on to you as a person but also as a musician. And so I think after I've been receiving such like positive – sort of engagement I start to think about that like sort of my legacy or sort of how people are going to perceive me and it has been really interesting to think about honestly yeah because I mean you've already started the story the book is already open the pen is in your mm-hmm. hand the paragraphs are being created and 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 that's what viewers are doing they're they're, they're already embracing your journey forward right um it's amazing honestly like, everyone is so supportive I, I don't know why. I think when you, when you think of putting yourself out there on a, like this national, like very and international, like this large scale, you you just expect there to be like more negative than there is positive. But honestly, like it is overwhelmingly positive, and um, I don't know. It's been amazing. One of the things that inspires me a, a lot about you is that your, your family history and, and roots and things like that. I mean, you, you mm-hmm. still want to have that connection. And I love you for that because so much of our mm-hmm. history is being lost by people who say, no, I'm going to live my life. Yeah, it's been amazing. I think my um, so my parents are Nigerian immigrants. My oldest brother was actually born in Nigeria. They moved to America and had me in Chicago, my, me and my older sister. Um, so because I'm first gen, it, it, it like I, I, I'm semi fluent in Igbo. I understand it fully. It, we grew up eating Nigerian food. We still eat it now. There are things about my culture that were just too present in my life for me to, you know, sort of forget about it or like put it off to the side. But I think it is a common occurrence whenever uh, your family moves to America or whenever your generations down the line. Luckily, I'm first gen, so I, I really had that attachment. And my grandparents who still live in Nigeria, they would visit every now and then. But um, I think a lot of people that get generations down the line they lose the culture, they lose the language, they lose the influences. And it can be a really sad thing. So I'm very grateful to my parents and um, my family surrounding me. And um, I'm just proud of myself for keeping in touch with that. One of the one of the things that's inspiring about you is that you don't let fate happen. You you go out and you activate yourself step mm-hmm. by step by step. I mean, you are always in forward motion. <laughs> yeah, I think it is sort of the go getter in me, like the overachiever in me. I I'm always thinking of a second plan. I'm always thinking of a ba- like a, a fallback. I'm always thinking about another avenue. And it's just because I want to expend my talents and my full potential to, to the highest possibility. I, I sat on it for the long high college because I was I was afraid of what might happen mm-hmm. if I put myself out there. Um, and I think I've grown to realize that I was I was I've been blessed. I've been given a lot of different things that I can do, and I want to try to see if if any of them stick or if all of them do and two of them have been sticking <laughs> <laughs> do, do you see medicine or music being a a great medicine for people oh my god yes um i think music has been one of the biggest you know healing things in my life truly like any sort of negative thing or positive thing that's happened to me has been not remedied if not remedied you know soothed me in some way made me and it's also like it's markers it's like highlights of my life when I think about certain parts of my life that I loved or that I you know was having a hard time and I think about it in terms of music I think about it in terms of the song I was listening to on the radio I think about it in terms of the song my mom played um, when we were cooking our Thanksgiving dinner it mm-hmm. truly is such a big part of my life and of everyone's life in some way hmm. how did you get up to hot springs from Chicago 
that's that's a wonderful question and i wish i could tell you i <laughs> my parents we moved around a couple times we went from chicago to uh, iowa to virginia to arkansas and i remember thinking like why 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 <laughs> because arkansas was such a difference from chicago such a difference from iowa and virginia but it was for a uh, my mom she got a job as a cardiologist at the hospital here oh, wow. um and so i remember just thinking okay this is like i'm just gonna have to move on and like we'll only be here for a couple years we move all the time and then we just ended up staying here so <laughs> <laughs> I, I i like ended up loving a lot of things about arkansas it's it's quiet it's definitely smaller than chicago um and so it was it was a different life but it was still a good life i just had to adjust I mean, first of all, the, the 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 lay of the land in Arkansas is amazing. I mean, there, it, it's like uh, you know, it's very poetic. It's like there's music mm-hmm. in the hills. I mean, there there. I mean, mm-hmm. you're you're there for a reason because you're picking up on a vibe there. Hmm. I agree. Yeah. Completely. It's very like natural state, you know. Well, you you being in medical school, how fast are the lessons of medicine changing? I can't imagine how science is changing your landscape. Mm-hmm. It's. In terms of like my courses, how quickly am I learning stuff or in general? Because I mean, I mean, look at look at what's happened to medicine just in the past two years. I mean, it's it's just mm. crazy. It is insane, honestly. I think it's it's really in a uh, sort of indication of that is like I'll be in class and um, a lot of it will be like we don't really know about this just yet, or you know, this is changing even now. But and I'm like, wow. So like. I can only imagine how people in medicine were were like like learning medicine. People in med school like ten years ago felt, or like years before that. Like it's always just ever evolving. And it's an amazing thing because it's working to our benefit that it's ever evolving. But it's just um, really fascinating that what we're learning can't is is not necessarily the cold hard truth and may not be the truth in like the next couple of minutes yeah yeah because i mean i mean there's there's always something new being introduced by some sort of company that's trying to help Mm -hmm. you know bring peace to other people's minds you know and but Mm -hmm. you know there was there was a native american medicine man i sat down with and he says remember that in the western world they practice medicine and it's like wow you just took a lot of energy from from doctors because i don't look at them as practicing i look at them as being professionals yeah that's what it is. You're practicing medicine. And I think because doctors do get put on this pedestal um, of knowledge and of, of professionalism, and I think to a certain degree it's warranted because of how much schooling they've been through. So technically they, they are knowledgeable, but no one knows everything. No one is, No one has the ability to diagnose everything perfectly. So you're practicing medicine. You, you don't You don't fully, fully 100% know that you're doing everything completely right. It's just impossible. Do you find yourself being a cardiologist like your mother? That is definitely one of the avenues. My mom, she really wants me to do cardiology, um, <laughs> which makes sense. She wants me to like, practice with her and stuff like that, which is actually a possibility. Um, but I think that orthopedic surgery, um, nice. neurosurgery, I've sort of leaned towards those. Um, neurosurgery is a bit iffy just because of the residency length it's and, and uh, how rigorous it is. But if I'm passionate enough about neuro and I'm passionate enough about surgery, I could find myself there. My God, what your imagination! Uh, are we going to see a TV show about you one day? It's going to be the Singing Doctor. It's going to you're going to be working on those nerves and stuff yes. like that, just singing songs yes. to your patients. <laughs> Uh huh. I'm launching my new reality show, The Singing Doctor. Thank you for the name, by the way. <laughs> where did you get the confidence to sing Whitney Houston? I want to dance with somebody. I mean, we're talking about a <laughs> legendary song. Yes, yes. So Camila gave me the confidence because she gave us the song, and so, <laughs> and so I remember looking at Zach and thinking, "Oh." my god <laughs> but like she just gave us Whitney Houston and they didn't even show the clip of us reacting to the song but it was honestly like we were like oh my god what are we gonna do what are we gonna do, are we gonna do? and then we heard the cut of it and the cut is very different from Whitney Houston's cut. it's still like the bare bones were there obviously never to leave but it's a more acoustic like um 
taken down it's, it's definitely a different vibe and from there we could sort of see ourselves being in that performance and so yeah it was honestly amazing sometimes when i think about the fact that i sang whitney houston on like national television i'm like i like shudder a bit i completely forget that i was singing that song like it's amazing. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I was that jock on the radio that when Whitney uh, Houston appeared on the music scene, then it became a competition between her and Mariah Carey. And it was like, oh, my God, I'm living <laughs> history. And so, I mean, I, yeah. I and of course, I, I, I went with with Whitney. And it's just, I just yeah. because she's got that voice. Mm-hmm. The, she's honestly insane. When, when you say that you took the song down like to an acoustic version, was it was that inspired mm-hmm. by Camilla? Because Camilla is really into that 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 vibration of getting inside the soul with that guitar. For sure. Yeah, I think it was definitely her idea. Um, it was never an upbeat situation. Like I think parts of the song performance were upbeat, but um, it was never. It from the beginning, the cut was a very acoustic. Uh, situation which that was lovely because I think if it had been an upbeat disco pop um, it might have been hard to settle into that for both of us because we are more legato emotive um, slow song singers and I like to see uh, sing upbeat uh, every now and then but for the most part, you know, for a duet, it would be hard for, I think, both of us to do. Oh, I'll tell you what, Andrew, the one thing that's missing from my dance floor at all these weddings that I do is a great modern day slow song. I rely so much on the classics and it's like, man, I wish there was something mm-hmm. new today that, that really could get into the vibration of love. Mm-hmm. So true. Are you working on th- songs like that? I mean, you got to be doing something. I mean, you, you're not just sitting there uh, yeah. you know, wanting to be a doctor and a musician at the same time. Yeah, it's been amazing uh, how many opportunities this has afforded me. I've been able to record music and make you know partnerships with people um, for future recording music, and it's it's just like so, so 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 cool. Um, and it, it's been sort of navigating the voice med school and then trying to record my own music, and I think that's been kind of a hassle. But I'm making it work. I'm making it work, and it's possible. I've realized um, that people have always told me, that's impossible. There's zero way that you can handle both or all of those. And I'm realizing that it is possible. Like, there's just, if you if you want it bad enough and if you really make the time to make each of them work in their own way, it is possible. Well, you, you just proved a point true that I learned a couple of weeks ago, and that is if you're going to put a label on me, that you're limiting me. Don't put a label on me just because I'm in exactly. medicine. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to be open to all things, therefore I can do mm-hmm. them. Mm. Yeah, and that was something that was scaring me as well. I was like, oh, I, I have to be a doctor. Like, I can't, I can't do this if I'm a doctor. But then I thought to myself, well, why not? Why not? Like, what makes it to where being a physician, studying medicine means that I can't also study music or um, be a musician, you know? There's no rule book. There's, there's no, nothing that's set in stone that tells me I can't do it. So I'm, I, I don't see why not. Oh, I love your passion. I love your drive. It, you know, I, I just wish more people had your your vision and visibility of, of what, what is to come. And the only way you're going to get there is you've got to make an effort. Exactly. The, that's the whole thing. So, so like, will we one day see your office with a recording studio in it? And they're going to go, uh, Dr. Andrew, Dr. Andrew, you're needed right now. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'm on my way. And then when you come back, you record a song. <laughs> Yes, yeah, something like that for sure. I'm telling you, it can make a wonderful reality show. <laughs> oh, my God. Where can people go to find out more about you, Andrew? Because I want people to know you. I want, the, I want them to experience mm. your all. I think my Instagram can be a little like, you know, I don't post that to that many like private things on my Instagram, but which is Andrew Rockney. But my TikTok is which is just my name or Iggy498. That's sort of my personal, more personal side. I have a lot of more personal videos of me and videos of me singing, videos of me um, at my shoots, like different like modeling things I've done. So it's like, it's like really nice actually. Excellent. Well, doctor, I look forward to talking to you one more time, except I don't want to be on the table when I have that conversation. I want to have a real conversation (laughs) face to face. Yes, of course. (laughs) You'd be brilliant today. Okay, Andrew. Thank you. You're amazing.